Blog Talk Radio. Calling all men. It's now your time for your show with your coach, The Men's Advocate Show with Linda Gross. Relax, be heard, and be understood. It's a show where men can be men. Now here's the coach who has your back, Linda Gross. Welcome, everybody, to another edition of the Men's Advocate Show. Yes, you're on with me, your host, Linda Gross. Today, we are going to be talking about the entitlement complex. Oh, boo-hoo. I'm so energized to tell you about today's show. (laughs) Does your girlfriend have an excessive need for admiration Perhaps she has a disregard for other people's feelings. Maybe she's unable to handle any criticism and or ah, she has a big dollop of a sense of entitlement. Well, you've come to the right place. Maybe you're dating a narcissist. Let's get to what we need to talk about, right? (laughs) Boy, oh boy, is she in this category? All right, now when we were toddlers, it was kind of cute when we threw a tantrum because we didn't get what we wanted. After crying ourselves silly, our parents picked us up to say, maybe later, maybe you'll get that toy later. Then they wiped our tears, blew our noses, and set us on the ground again. As we grew older, some of us would learn to wait our turn. Be patient and show consideration for others. Well, some of us didn't get that memo. Some would continue to throw tantrums well into adulthood, but even more mature and sophisticated in even more mature and sophisticated ways, they would continue to expect special treatment just because. And it's what they deserve, they thought. Naturally. Well, here's the thing. She's not so special. It's not always me, me, me. Linked with narcissism, having a sense of entitlement can easily be mistaken as natural and even healthy. I mean, after all, Don't our parents and societies constantly tell us that we're unique, we're special, and we're number one? I need you to chime in on this topic. Yes, you do. All right, here you go. You two ways to to chime in. You can call in, and that number is 323-642-1677, 323-642-1677. One six seven seven, and for those of you who are listening live right now, you can call. You can uh, write into the chat line. Same uh, same address as the show: blogtalkradio.com forward slash dt Linda Gross. Oh, sorry, I got something in my eye. Blogtalkradio.com forward slash dt Linda Gross. I'll be looking for you. All right. So narcissism. What is this? What are the symptoms of this? Well, it includes an excessive need for admiration, a disregard for other people's feelings, an inability to handle any criticism, and a sense of entitlement. Now, sense of entitlement is when an individual perceives themselves as deserving of unearned privileges. These are the people who believe life owes them something. Perhaps it's a reward, a measure of success, a particular standard of living. The belief that it's all about me 
is often instilled in the home when the children, when as children, their parents make them the center of the universe. Now, sadly, as the years march on past childhood, instead of gaining empathy, they instead hold on to their entitlement issues even stronger. It becomes a crutch and then an identity to who they are. Empathy is the ability to understand and share the feelings of another. This becomes a scary proposition as the entitled people um, have gotten so many rewards from the parent who showered them with such undue praise and acceptance. So as a result, they became stuck in a childish, self-absorbed mindset. All right, so let's back this uh, reel up a little bit more. It takes two to tango. Why does the parent do this? Because the parent feels there's something lacking with their spouse. As such, they increase the value of the child. In psychology, we call this transference. The feelings they should have for their spouse are inappropriately transferred to the child. So having a sense of entitlement is a malignant form of self-love because it often harms the people around us, which indirectly harms us in the long term. In essence, a sense of entitlement is established and upheld by the belief that we are at the center of the universe. And if the universe doesn't meet our needs and desires, well, all hell will break loose, right? So this narcissistic mindset is often the result of failing to learn as children and young adults that we are not so special and that other people don't merely exist to serve our needs and wants. Some typical examples of a narcissistic sense of entitlement behaviors include the following. So here, here they are. Let's take a look at Jack and Ashley. They're in a long-term relationship. Jack works full-time to support Ashley and their child in a small two-bedroom apartment. Ashley spends a large chunk of Jack's money on dresses and fancy accessories. When confronted, Ashley screams that she never wanted to live a poor and lonely life and that Jack never treats her anyway. Oh, boy. The next one, Zach shows up unexpected at his mother's house, drunk one night, expecting to receive a bed and a hot meal. When his mother refuses, telling him to call his girlfriend to pick him up, he argues with her and drives away in a drunken rage, not talking to her for the next six months. How about Austin and Kate? They are best friends, but when Katie doesn't respond to one of Austin's texts within a half an hour, Austin blocks her and doesn't talk to her for the next week. Austin fights with Katie, accusing her of not caring and forgetting about her. Mm -mm -mm. And then lastly, let's let's take a look at a gay couple, Alex and Nicholas, who are about to get married. Now, while Alex wants a humble and modest ceremony, Nicholas wants to be extravagant and expensive. Meeting with the wedding advisor while Alex is sick one day, Nicholas decides to raise the budget from $5,000 to $20,000. When Alex finds out, he demands to know why. Nicholas says that he deserves more than just, quote-unquote, a measly little wedding, and guilt trips Alex into going through with it. So basically, the narcissist displays both passive and aggressive disregard for others. All right, if you've just joined us, you're currently listening to the Men's Advocate Show with me, your host, Linda Gross. We are talking about the entitlement complex. Yes, we are. You can join in on this topic 
323-642-1677. You can also join in on our chat line, blogtalkradio.com forward slash DT Linda Gross forward slash DT Linda Gross. All right, so when we come back from the break, we're going to be talking about some of the symptoms that you uh, can look for with regard to people who have the sense of entitlement. All right, we'll catch you right back after the break. The Men's Advocate Show with Linda Gross. We will be discussing men's issues, dating, relationships, sex, women, fitness, health, business, men's hobbies, men's rights, and more. She will be talking about excerpts from her men's book, Mastering Women, too. Hi, guys. You've heard her on the Men's Advocate Show. Linda Gross wants you to know what turns a woman on and makes her go wild so she just can't help herself. Check out Linda's book, Mastering Women, Real Truth About Women That'll Change Your Life Forever. Linda gives you all the insider tips on how to catch a woman and, if you want, to keep her. In four easy steps, these proven techniques will make women just melt. Ever wonder why the girl you really liked seemed to be great when you met, then all of a sudden just goes cold on you and turns you off? Linda will also let you know what not to do on a date. Never blow it again by losing another hot woman. You don't have to be good looking or even have money. Her book, Mastering Women, is available in paperback and ebook. Men, Linda's on your side. So buy her book, Mastering Women. Buy it for now. And don't keep your women waiting another minute. Get Mastering Women today. You've heard her on the Men's Advocate Show with Linda Gross. How can you help further? From her Facebook fan page of the same name. Hit the Shop Now button and save this link to your favorites. Make all your usual Amazon purchases and some of the revenue will support her show at no additional cost to you. No book purchase required. Just start with this link every time. The Men's Advocate Show with Linda Gross thanks you. Welcome back, everybody. You're currently listening to the Men's Advocate Show with me, your host, Linda Gross. Today we are talking about the entitlement complex. Join in on this topic. Do you have, is your woman like this? (laughs) Do you need to shovel your way out of that hole? Call us at 323-642-1677. Again, that number is 323-642-1677. So by now, you're probably wondering, do I have a sense of entitlement? Or even more troubling, does my girlfriend have this behavior? Like anything in life, there is a spectrum. While she may not be a full-blown narcissist or have a borderline personality disorder, she may exhibit a certain level of selfishness that makes other people's lives hard. Here are some of the symptoms that people who have a sense of entitlement uh, may have, right? Okay, so she imposes unrealistic demands on family, children, friends, acquaintances, lovers, employees, and or even employers. Okay, look out for this type. Next. She tends to feel sorry for herself if things don't work out the way that she wanted. Self-pity is something that she uses and openly advertises this in melodramatic, attention-seeking ways. People have called her a bully, manipulative, ruthless, egotistical, vain, or even a liar. Have you heard these terms? Next up, she believes that she deserves happiness and goes to great, sometimes extreme lengths to ensure that happens and often at the expense of others. She demonstrates demonstrates this in a couple of different ways. 
passively, meaning uh, the silent treatment, gossiping, spreading rumors, or aggressively, meaning shouting, verbally, or physically abusing. All right. Next up, in order to succeed in life, she believes in going to any length to accomplish what she wants to get done. Next up, she constantly sees other people either as competition or as threats. Have you heard, seen that type before? All right. What else? Well, she tends to exhibit many double standards in the way she behaves or interacts with other people. For example, she might say stuff like, I can be late and forget my duties and commitments, but you can't. Or, I can treat myself, but you can't treat yourself. Or, I can abuse or disrespect you, but you can't do that to me. Have you heard these before? Okay. Next up, she tends to take more than she gives in friendships and relationships. We've all been there. We've all had somebody in our corner like this. Next up, she tends to look out for herself, her needs, her desires more than anyone else, almost 100% of the time. She has a hard time negotiating or compromising. Yep, (laughs) that sounds familiar. She has a deep-seated conviction that she has priority and should always come first, even at the expense of stepping on others. How about people always seem to be offended or upset by what she says or does? She generally thinks that she is better or more important than other people, that other people should see this and unquestioningly respect her. How about she craves admiration and adoration? She likes to assert her dominance or superiority over other people, finding it, hey, second nature. She has an uncompromising attitude. There is a lack of understanding others' needs in certain social situations, accompanied by an expectation that they should be far more interested in her life than she is in theirs. She has an over-exaggerated sense of self-importance, accompanied by fantasies of power, beauty, and brilliance. (laughs) All right. Uh, How about compromises that require one to meet others halfway don't exist in the world of the entitled. Everyone else is is either competition, threatening uh, their own success, or irrelevant. Well, I guess Frank Sinatra must have written this song for her. She often has a it's it's my way or the highway thinking, uh, and that line becomes a very common attribute of hers. Next up, the headstrong woman maps out a forceful route one that may be fruitful for them, but they are totally unaware of the carnage that lay in their wake. And they are in complete denial about holding any personal responsibility for their actions. Next up, the self-entitled woman often appears totally oblivious to the inconveniences that they have caused you. Next Taking turns to wash the dishes after a meal or taking turns to make coffee in the morning, uh, uh, no, uh uh-uh, it's a foreign concept to them. Their motto is to be the taker, and that's that. Giving praise is not something that they can do. In fact, quite the opposite. 
They are often cynical and overly critical and quick to pump their own pump up their own accomplishments. They are no strangers to confrontation, however. They are ruthless in their stance to believe this position is justified. And they easily say things like, I can't believe I have to work with such morons. They express their anger passively, too, like cutting, like a cutting glance or rolling their eyes to signal their contempt for those around them. They feel their anger is justified. Rage, which is a cover for a deeper need, is often fueled by underlying shame, like most bullies. The anger projected onto others is often driven from their own insecurities. When aggressive behavior doesn't help the self-entitled woman reach their goals, a case of poor me may break out. (laughs) Isn't that the truth? All right, next up, although consumed by the belief that social rules don't apply to them, you can be sure they will loudly complain if they feel like they are being shortchanged and not given enough credit, like on a group, uh, a group project at work. Next, they often misinterpret their feelings as facts. <laughs> oh, yes, we've seen that before. They often blame others for the situation that they are in. Their unmet expectations leave them feeling dissatisfied and chronically disappointed. Behind all this behavior is an individual who craves to be admired and adored. They are in constant need of validation from their peers, while simultaneously demanding respect. They are so desperately full of insecurities, it is as though uh, it is through enforcement of their superiority that they are trying to remedy their emotional distress. Now, how does this all end up? Well, after a while, these socially destructive qualities have isolated them from society. And in the end, even those who are near and dear to them hold their guarded distance. Then depression can set in when the wall of self-entitlement begins to crumble. All right, if you've just joined us, you're currently listening to the Men's Advocate Show with me, uh, your voice, your host, Linda Gross. We are talking today about the entitlement complex. All right, so I want to hear you chime in at 323-642-1677, 323-642-1677, and we're going to catch you right back after the break. What are some things that we can do to help remedy and improve this situation? Uh, we'll, We'll go over those right back after the break. Hey, guys, do you have a nagging problem that you just can't get a handle on? Now you can talk to an expert coach right in the privacy of your own home. Meet in person, over the phone, or with a free Skype call anywhere in the world. Linda is here to make it easy for you. Linda Gross has done years of academic research combined with interviewing over 20,000 men. Linda's expert advice gets you through tackling relationship issues, business goals, conflict resolution, and removing lifetime roadblocks that have kept you back, usually handled in four sessions or less. Realize the benefits now. Go to the Men's Advocate page slash coaching and you'll be on your way. That's themensadvocate.com slash coaching. Darn, maybe you missed part of this show. Maybe you're still at work during the show. Maybe you heard the show but would like to listen again. Your problems are easily solved. Listen to any and all of Linda's archived shows at your convenience. Just Google SoundCloud, The Men's Advocate. That's Google SoundCloud, The Men's Advocate. The on-demand library is also available on the TuneIn app. Subscribe now and please share with your friends. Well, 
welcome back, everybody. You're currently listening to the Men's Advocate Show with me, your host, Linda Gross. Today we are talking about the entitlement complex. So how to improve this situation? Gosh, what is a person supposed to do? Well, it's important to remember that we all suffer from personality flaws. While some of us are stingy or are deeply insecure, others of us have a sense of entitlement complexes, right? So if you tend to show this narcissistic trait, there are many ways to slowly work through it to improve the quality of your life and the lives of others. And you can also apply these techniques to your girlfriend or uh, to your wife as well. All right. So what's rule number one? Well, That would be developing more self-awareness. Without being aware of what you think, feel, and do, you won't be able to progress too far because you're going to be in a state of denial. So that awareness step is key into moving forward. Identifying your inner expectations about the world as well as deep-seated beliefs and ideals. Where did those beliefs and ideals come from? Probably they came sometime during your childhood and probably through your parents. So kind of go back in time to figure out when did I start having this belief system about this particular thing, right? All right. Let's see. Oh, I see people here. Yay. (laughs) Okay. Nice. Welcome. I see there are people on board. That's exciting. It says you've joined the conversation, Mr. and Miss Purple Pill. Welcome. All right. So, all right. So, define those beliefs and ideals. And perhaps you can use a therapist or even maybe a hypnotherapist to uncover what those um beliefs and ideals are. Some people use yoga. Some people use meditation. Do whatever it is you need to do to wrestle those feelings and let them come to the surface. Often a sense of entitlement stems from unhealthy or unrealistic perceptions that you may not even be aware of. All right, so work to accept life as it is without imposing your beliefs, ideals, or expectations. So this includes practicing forgiveness and allowing people to be, to be the way they are naturally. Don't impose your view on them, right? All right, so concentrate on developing compassion and empathy. Remember we talked about empathy a little bit earlier in the program. This is so very important because the person who is self-entitled, somehow or another, they don't have that empathy gene. So try to work on that phase and that will help complete the circle and put the picture more in focus. Asking, how does my behavior affect others? How does he or she, the other person, the third person, feel right now? Try to climb into their moccasins for a minute. It's not all about you, right? Um, Another good question to ask would be, how would it feel if I were him or her, right? Um, this This helps to expand the mind. It opens it up to new and beneficial ways of thinking, and that's what we need to do in order to make that happen. All right. Celebrate with other people and celebrate other people, right? So pay attention to the happiness and the joy of others. Happiness shared is happiness multiplied, Also, being thankful for the people in your life allows you a place, allows you to place more importance in them, seeing how truly special not only they are, but how truly special they are in your life, right? All right, and then slowly working on cultivating true self-love, true self-love, not the malignant kind 
and the corrupt kind that we talked about earlier in the show, but self-love for real. Because a lot of these negative behaviors are occurring because you are stressed, you have anxiety, you feel insecure, you feel abandoned, or, or whatever that feeling was in childhood that made you adopt this entitlement. Entitlement is sort of a control trip, isn't it, right? It's putting up that wall, putting up that barrier before anyone else can put up the barrier. Um, so we're on to you. We, we know why you're doing this. So these tips will, will all uh, come in handy with regard to this. All right. So um, I'm not really sure how to, it says, there are people in the chat line, and they are engaging, and I'm so happy that you guys are engaging. And I don't know if you're supposed to type a message or if you can talk, you know, via audio. Maybe you can. All right, we'll wait and see <laughs> for you guys to come forward, but I am uh, looking and listening. All right, so... If you've just joined us, you're currently listening to the Men's Advocate Show with me, your host, Linda Gross. By the way, if you like our show, there's many ways that you can uh, show your love. You can listen, call, subscribe, chat, like our fan page, follow, comment, share, tell a friend, advertise with me, start with my Amazon link, download my app, and buy my book on Amazon. So the book, by the way, is The Science of Mastering Women, The Real Truth That Will Change Your Life Forever. And you can get that book on Amazon. We ha- you can download it in a few seconds, the ebook format, or you can have them ship you a copy. Again, just go to Amazon, uh, type in Mastering Women, Linda Gross. It should pop up, and voila. <laughs> you will be in the know, right? Anything and everything that you want to discover about women that you were having headaches with or roadblocks with, and the women don't necessarily have to be a romantic partner. Heck, uh, my guys write to me and say, gee, I use some of your techniques on a coworker or maybe somebody, a family member at the family reunion that I've never gotten along with or my next door neighbor that I'm having an issue with. You can apply these uh, techniques in virtually any scenario. The techniques are not obvious, but they're certainly very easy to do, and, they're, and they are universal, and there's only four of them. So it's my contention that all you have to do is just uh, um, employ these four skills, and you can win over any woman, anywhere, anytime. Okay? All right. Very good. Um, also, we have a whole library of on-demand shows. If you happen to have missed last week's show, it was called The Evolutionary Attraction of Smelling. So the basic hygiene is a fundamental part of looking and smelling good, even though we all know this, so many people still fail at it. Humans have an evolutionary attraction towards clean people because they were the safe ones to be around throughout history. They were safe because they survived, right? All right. So we still have those traits and simply like the people who are clean and smell good. So how can you win someone over if you stink? With a little bit of effort, meaning deodorant, shower, and brush your teeth, you can be the next James Bond Jr., all right? So how do you listen to last week's show? Well, you can listen to last week or any of any and all of the archive shows. Just type into to Google the Men's Advocate Show with Linda Gross, the Men's Advocate Show with Linda Gross, and all of those references and links will come up. So you can listen right here on archive. Uh, to Blog Talk Radio for 2019. And then previous to that, um, the main library is SoundCloud. We're also on TuneIn. And basically, we're all over the place. Just, you know, your favorite podcast uh, station that you normally listen to, um, I think our shows are coming up there as well. 
So just type it in, and uh, you'll be able to find it easily on the search engine. Thank you so much for joining us. We are here uh, usually on Tuesdays. Um, That would be 3 p.m. Pacific time, 6 p.m. Eastern time. We'll see you next Tuesday uh, right here on Blog Talk Radio. And uh, please tell your friends about us. We look forward to seeing you. We look forward to chatting with you. If you have a guest or a comment or a topic that you would like me to cover, please let me know. There's lots of ways that you can find me. Same name as the show. You can find me on Facebook, on Twitter. Uh, You can find me on uh, Instagram. Our our Instagram handle is uh, Linda Gross Speaks. Linda Gross Speaks. So lots of ways. Just, Just Google it. It's We're everywhere. (laughs) All right. I look forward to seeing you next week. You guys have a beautiful and safe week, and we'll talk to you next time on the Men's Advocate Show. Bye for now.